Hi, my name is Tom Cross, and I'm a computer security researcher with the IBM X Force. One of the things that X Force has been spending a lot of time thinking about recently is that sort of next generation network technologies that telecommunications carriers are deploying. When you start using voice over IP to provide telephone service instead of some of the more traditional technologies, what are the new computer security issues you have to concern yourself with? What do carriers need to worry about? Well, one potential concern is that attackers could launch attacks against the carrier infrastructure itself. These issues are similar to the ones that have been faced by everyone who's deployed web servers and other internet infrastructure over the past few years. Attacks can flow from the internet into uh, phones in a, in a carrier network. Furthermore, attackers on the carrier network could launch attacks against the service land, affecting voice over IP systems and application servers that provide advanced applications to customers on a next generation network. Now why would someone want to hack into a phone? Well, uh, telephones have an increasing amount of personal data. Phones could have microphones and, and uh, cameras in them and you know an attacker could turn them on and, and listen to what's going on. This iPhone is, is probably one of the most sophisticated uh, cell phones that anyone has ever made. It's got a really great user interface and, and lots of uh, excellent features. Unfortunately, it also has computer security vulnerabilities. There was a TIFF vulnerability uh, that was disclosed. I, it was actually an old vulnerability. It was disclosed before the iPhone uh, became available on the market. Uh, and uh, exploits have circulated for the iPhone that um, attack this vulnerability. Most of them are used by people who own the phones. They run the exploit willingly against their own phones so that they can unlock it uh, and install third-party software that Apple doesn't want them to install. But uh, if they can willingly do this, a bad guy can do it without permission, uh, and he can install his own third-party software without permission. The way that phones, uh, or the way that generally speaking uh, clients get attacked today is out on the web. They're browsing the web and they hit a website uh, with uh, some sort of embedded uh, JavaScript uh, or something, some image that exploits a vulnerability in their browser and takes control of their computer. And the, it turns out that the TIFF vulnerability in the iPhone can be exploited with a TIFF image that's out on a website. I have a web page here. Um, this is just an example, and I'll load it up here on the phone. It's just sort of a standard web page, and you can see a couple of banner ads in this page. Now, often uh, what these attackers will do is that they'll take their malicious image and put it in a banner ad network uh, so that a bunch of legitimate sites end up hosting their exploits. I'll go um, here and, and load a different version of that page where I've replaced one of the banner ads with an image that exploits this vulnerability. Uh, and so I try to load that page and eventually my browser crashes. That's interesting. Uh, and then, uh, well, you may not be able to tell, uh, but the phone has now started to vibrate, which is a little strange. Uh, and oh, <laughs> now I have the skull uh, that says that it controls my iPhone, just popped up here. Um, and I can drag him on top of the interface, and it turns out I can't access the UI anymore because this skull is in the way. Uh, if I'm gonna use the phone, I'm going to have to shut it down and start it back up again. This guy now has complete control over my cell phone. So how do we, how do we protect against that? How do we prevent this from occurring? Well, there are patches out for this vulnerability, but iPhone users have to know to go and install them. Uh, and you know, the, the reality is that, that carriers might have an interest in, in preventing this from happening, particularly as this attacks, these attacks become more sophisticated. One thing a carrier could do is put an intrusion prevention system between the phones and the internet, so that attacks that come in from the internet will get blocked, uh, but normal legitimate traffic will flow through. It, and we have a Prevenia appliance right here. So what we're going to do uh, is take our, our web server and run it through the Prevenia appliance. The phone has to go through this appliance in order to, uh, in order to access the web. I've got my uh, browser up again, and I'll go back to the uh, example web page. And of course, even though we're going through the, um, the Preventi appliance, it works fine. You can see it here. But let's go back to the exploit web page. Click on the exploit web page, just like I did before. And it's loading that page. And it managed to pull it up this time. And you can see over here uh, that. Uh, you know, and there used to be a banner ad at that location, uh, but now uh, there's a little uh, broken link. Because that picture uh, that used to be there 
has been blocked by the Pravidia appliance because it contained an exploit. If I go on the console of my Pravidia appliance, I can actually see the, that the event fired. I'll hit refresh here. Go to alerts. And you can see that the image uh, tiff, lib tiff, fetch short pair overflow uh, fired. That's the uh, vulnerability that affected the iPhone through uh, firmware revision 1.1.1. And uh, that's the vulnerability that my uh, TIFF image exploited. That's what the Preventia appliance detected. So in your carrier network, if you had these appliances between your customers and the internet, they uh, would be protected from attacks that they might be exposed to as they surf the web. So thanks for your time. Um, this has been Tom Cross with uh, IBM XForce.